r slash ask reddit. What will be the turns out cigarettes are bad for us of our generation? Hearing loss from earbuds. Sitting for 18 hours a day. I'd rather sit than stand all day at my job. At least desk jobs allow you to get up and move around. Everyone I know who worked on their feet for 25 to 30 years is a effing wreck of bad knees as a effing wreck of bad knees, ankles, etc. God forbid, computer screens. Otherwise we're super screwed. Not so much computer screens as they can't really do any harm independently, but looking at anything close to your eyes for long periods of time can. Short-term effects like arsy or dry eyes, maybe? There's no proof of any long-term effects yet. Maybe a good answer for this question, then, uh... Not enough sleep. So many of my friends are like, I've got work in six hours, so I gotta sleep. And I'm like, what, oh, how do you live on less than seven hours of sleep, oh, oh. Same with my dad. He's in the midst of building a store to open at the end of the month, and he spends most of his day there, and then will come home, eat dinner, go back out for a few more hours, Calm her back and sit on the couch, watching movies until he passes out in 2A. Wakes up at 7 a.m. to help my sister, Savenu, with morning routine. Then it's right back to his store. I don't get how people can function with so little sleep. I would love 10 aura a night, but with how much I work, it's hard to get more than 6 or 7 hours if I want a social life. Hearing loss isn't going to kill like cigarettes, but we sure beat the hell out of our ears via headphones. At this point, I'm just hoping the technology to restore slash maintain our hearing will be widespread by the point it's a serious problem for me. Pretty much the same for me. Hearing's already fucked, just holding out for the hope that it'll be fixable in the next couple of decades. Sugar, sugar. I really pray it's not LASIK eye surgery. Wasn't that a Simpsons gag? A blind Flanders opens to door. Who'd have thought after ten years your eyes just fall out? Please, don't be garlic bread. My friend was telling me about this guy she used to date. Every time they'd go to a sit-down restaurant, he would tell the waiter slash waitress his order and cap it with and that comes with free garlic bread, right? Confused at first, the waiter would say no, sorry. When the waiter comes back with food or a drink, he would always say, oh, I'm still missing that free garlic bread. Turns out if he wore them down and continued mentioning it, he would consistently get free garlic bread. As someone who used to be a server, that guy sounds like the worst. Putting your entire life online and having it all stored forever. There's going to be an embarrassing digital paper trail for the next generation of MPs, senators, and diplomats. I'd like to think that we'll get to the stage as a species where it won't matter that you made a comment on Twitter about wanting to eat your girlfriend's butt like a snack cake when you were 19 or because you once sent a photo of your breasts to a partner. But somehow I doubt it. That shit's going to end at least a couple of political careers before they even begin. Except by the time those politicians are running, everyone will have such comments to look through. Exactly. My parents believed that smoking weed would disqualify anyone from running. Now, Clinton and Obama definitely did. Bush the Younger did coke, for God's sake. Times change? Turns out that filling the ocean with plastic refuse wasn't the smartest thing people in the early 21st century did. Quote from 22nd century textbook. Some scientists say we're in the Plasticine era. It's kind of sad. Turns out shielding everyone from risk creates a lower risk acceptance threshold. Yes, absolutely. As an example, the most shielded kids usually go wild whenever they get an ounce of freedom. Most fundamentalist parents don't realize this. Kids that are too shielded from the world can't really function within it. While I agree on the fact that shielded children will go overboard with their first doses of independence, I think more damaging is that their reluctance is to take risk at opportune moment. Turns out that your haters can dab back at you. What do you do when haters dab back? Ask Jake Paul. Oh wait, he blocked me. Plastics, at least for foodstuffs, i.e. packaging, containers, plates, etc. We keep finding out that certain kinds of slash things in plastic are harmful to us. The answer so far has been to avoid those particular things, but then we just find the next thing that's bad for us. We know that most plastic leaches chemicals when heated up, yet most people still throw it in the dishwasher. You should check out all of the seemingly harmless dollar store items that are loaded with harmful toxins. I believe Vice put the article out. Really disheartening to learn how little health regulations are in place and all the butt-backwards loopholes that companies use to keep these products on shelves. 
especially items that are marketed towards children. If you can't find the article, you should find results in Google if you search for toxicity of dollar store bendy straws. Yikes, that's scary. Just when we got the lead out of paint, there's this. Kids in poverty get screwed from all directions. Working 50, 60 hour weeks in stress is actually bad for you. It's only getting worse for poor people. Cost of living goes up. Real wages keep falling. Single parents working multiple jobs just to make rent. Life is hard and winter is coming. People who put lemons in a water bottle to detox and end up with acid constantly on their teeth for eight hours a day. Lemon juice has a P's of two, two. People who put lemons in their water are probably drinking water with a PAP of three to five, depending on how many lemons. Carbonated water has a PAP of five. Soda has a PAP of two to three. That lemon wedge served with your tap water at a restaurant is inconsequential unless you maybe squeeze the absolute crap out of it. Lemon juice has a pace of two, meaning its concentration of hydrogen ions is one. If we add onets of lemon juice to 8 L as of water for tight 8 teaspoons, then, then we need to divide that 1 by 49 and add 1 by 49 and add 1, the H. 149, 1, 20, 42. Log 2042, 3.69 pH. If we assume you add a tablespoon of lemon, Y17, 880, 5883. Re by 5,883.23. Free E E 5,883. Tanning. People generally have accepted that excessive UV exposure is bad for you, but I haven't seen this translate into behavioral changes for society as a whole. It has changed. People in the 80s pretty much spent their weekends tanning outside. These days, not so much. Greek guy living in an island here. I probably watched tens of thousands of people tanning without sunscreen. Like there's no effing tomorrow in our beaches this summer so far. Northern Europeans. Germany, Scandinavia, UK mostly. Apparently don't give a F about sunscreen and have no idea what the sun does to you except burn you.